So welcome to this lab about managing secrets and containers. In this lab, we're going to see how to not manage secrets and containers and look at a couple of different ways of how we're going to pass secrets into our containers. So let's get started. So you can see we're in a lab environment. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is have a look at my secret. So my secret's not going to be a secret for the purposes of this lab, but we might as well look at what the secret we're trying to protect is. And it's a very basic JSON web token. So it's a still a fairly standard format for a JWT. Um, and we're going to authenticate against a very simple authentication service. Um, first thing we need to do is start the uh, API server, which is the thing we're going to authenticate into. So we'll just do a Docker run on that. The container's already built for you. Um, and then we'll just check that it's running. And there we go. We can see it, it's running. Um, and then let's give it a quick test just to show how it works. So we can do a very, very simple uh, curl command. Just going to curl to the uh, local host. And then we can see we get a, a 401 authorization required, which is exactly what we'd expect since we haven't passed a token in. Okay, so now let's try and add the um, authorization token in. We're going to do this with the um, authorization bearer header. And there you go, we get a response back with a 200 OK. We get a little response back in the body and we get a, a, a header telling us we've been successful and the name of our API key, API key one in this case. So that's the first part of the lab. It's pretty simple. We're up and running. The next we need to do is see how we're going to access that from a container. Each challenge just takes a second or two to start. So we're going to change into the directory. Um, unfortunately, the lab system resets your directory every time you take a new challenge, so we'll need to do this a, a few times. And what I've got is a, a subdirectory full of um, versions, different versions of our application. Um, the Docker file we're going to use is the same every time, but we're just going to copy new names of our applications to the app.py. It's a simple Python file. We'll take a look at that now. So here we can see we're actually hard coding the uh, JWT in our in our in our application, and we're using a very simple uh, URL lib to do a request, and we're using the add header um, to um, add the authorization header in. So we're going to use um, Docker Compose uh, to build this, and we're going to force a build each time, um, just so that we make sure we get the right version of the of the application. Just takes a second to build. You can see we're pulling down the uh, Python base container, and then we'll just add the application code to it. You'll get to see some of how the Docker file works um, as we do some of the challenges, actually. Then when it automatically runs it, and you'll see that we get the um, success API key one back from from the application, because we've obviously hard coded our uh, our secret into our code. That's kind of what we'd expect. Now the question is, how do we get to that secret? Is this a safe way of doing things? Well, not at all. So we're going to make an extract directory, um, and we're gonna then we're gonna see gonna change into that directory, and what we'll do is we'll find the container ID of our container. Um, just running a docker ps command with a little bit of handy formatting on it to make it easier to read. And then we can see our API client running and the container ID. Obviously, when you do the lab, your ID will be different. So we'll just cut and paste that. And we'll just do the docker export command on that container ID. into it, And that exports into a tar file. So there we go. I'll just add this in here. And can add the container ID. And the command just takes a, oh, and I haven't cut and pasted my container ID quite right. Let's fix that for you. There we go. Okay, this second, this command takes a couple of seconds to run. Obviously, the bigger your container, the more it's longer it's going to take to, to export into a tar file. Um, now, we could just like do a, we could do a straight like uh, search of all of this, but we could give ourselves some clues by doing a Docker history on the on the container, and then we can see what we've done to build the container. And obviously, it's done in sort of reverse order, so we can look at what the most recent um, things were. And you'll see over here that uh, the the command was to copy the app.py into user app src. So I think probably if we extract that file from our tar file, and obviously, you know, if we just found this container on a registry, we wouldn't have the Docker file, but we can still use these uh, these commands. And then if we go and then look at that file, 
obviously we're going to see the application code that we saw before but obviously you know this is where we've just using the, the image of the container that we may have accidentally left on a public registry and we can see our hard-coded app our hard-coded uh, authentication so that's not a great way of doing things and there's plenty of stories of uh, secrets leaking through people hard coding them and, and then accidentally leaving their containers lying around so let's look at another common way of using environment variables. Now, using environment variables is a good and normal way to pass things to our container at runtime. It's not a bad thing to do to pass things. It's not maybe the perfect thing to do for secrets, and we'll, we'll look at why. So again, we have to change into the directory. Um, if you're running your lab in your own environment, you won't need to do this. But And then we've got a new version of our app that uses environment variables. So let's take a look at the new version of our app. It's Again, it's very, very simple. You can see that we're using um, the JWT in the if it's in the environment variable, then we set the um, we set the the authorization header to use that JWT from the JWT environment variable. Okay, and how do we how do we set the environment variable? Well, we just use uh, the environment command in our Docker compose command, and obviously we need to set our environment variable to be something. Um, so let's do it without actually setting the environment variable, just to prove that there's nothing up my sleeve. Okay, so we'll run this now and we'll get a 401 unauthorized, just what we'd expect because there's no environment variable left. So let's um, let's do let's do the next step which will just export the environment variable of that uh, JSON token we saw. There you go, we've exported the environment variable and we'll run the docs, exactly the same Docker Compose again but obviously now we have the environment variable set and we get a 200 success and the name of our API key that we pass through. So that's great. I mean, that's worked very nicely. The, the um, Let's take a look at the container. Um, obviously, it's not going to be hard-coded in there anymore. We can we can take a look at... Uh, let's um, paste that in and see the Docker. There's our API server. And then we add minus A to see all of the containers because I didn't do an RM in my Docker command. So um, the, the container is lying around. So again, I'll be able to see my API client container ID. And I can use the handy docker inspect command on, on a running container or on a container that's been left over after over after its run. So let's just paste in the uh, container ID. And then we get a, a big bunch of useful stuff in our docker, um, docker inspect, but we can actually scroll up here and take a look at the environment variable section, which is env. And there we see our JWT again. So again, we've passed this in. It's not in hard-coded into the container image. So if it's in a registry somewhere, it's a bit safer. But if I can get uh, access to that to do a, uh, a Docker inspect, then I, I can see the environment variables. That's not so great. So let's try a different way of doing that. Let's try using secrets. We're just going to run this with some local secrets to start with. So let's, uh, let's look at this. So when I use a secret in Docker, it's different maybe in other container management systems, but the principle's the same. It actually gets exposed in the slash run slash secrets directory to the name of the secret. So again, I'm going to copy over my new app version, which is using secrets, and let's take a look at that. And you can see here that we basically read the job file from the, the run secrets, and then we open it, and then we uh, do that. We didn't. We don't check that there's only one line. Uh, maybe for next year we'll get around to doing that. Um, and then our Docker Compose uh, looks slightly different as well. Here we can see we're using the secrets command, both at the top, um, actually the top where we define where the secret is, which is in a file, local file, and then down in the container, we say what the name of the secret is. So again, we can run our Docker Compose. And... There we have it just running, building the container for us. And then we'll see it run and we'll get a, uh, hopefully we'll get a 200 OK. Just copy this over. And there we go, 200 OK. OK, so here's a question. Have we, how, how safe is this? You know, what happens if we try and uh, look at the, uh, the, let's do a, let's find our container ID. And then let's see what we can do some inspection, inspect on it. My copy and pasting skills need a bit of work, but there we go. We'll just copy this in here and then Docker inspect our container. Okay, let's go up to the env section and see what we can see. Ah, it's not there. Great. So 
fantastic. It's not available in an environment variable. But of course, there is um, that that um, var secrets file. So let's um, let's take a look at the run secrets file. Let's take a look at that. So we'll do a, again. We'll we'll um, export our container file system to another tar file. And then once we've done that, we'll just extract the one particular file, the run secrets jot file. Actually, we can see, we, we'll find out where it is first, I guess. There we go, so run secrets jot. So then let's just take a look at uh, extracting that. Okay, so we can see where we've extracted a file, but fortunately it's blank. Okay, so we, we're not able to see the um, See the secret in an environment variable, and we're not able to see it in in the uh, file system of the container. Unfortunately, <laughs> we can still see it because we have to have it locally on the file system. And if we restart, if we kill, and then want to restart our container, then it's just not going to work. So I'll sh I'll show you this. We'll just move it to um, token one dot sav or something. Let's see. Yeah, sav. We'll call it sav. Okay. So we'll move this. Um, we now don't have the container anymore. So if I then do a Docker compose again. Um, being lazy, there we go. Um, and we build it, and there we go. It wouldn't even start because we don't have that file. So, using local secrets is better in some ways, but also I've got to have the secret lying around on my file system, which again is not really the best thing to do. Let me just put that back to where it was so that I can use it in my next challenge, and we'll get on to the next one where we'll start looking at something even more secure. Okay, so here we're going to use a secrets manager. Now there's a bunch of different secrets managers out there, um, things like HashiCorp, Vault, all of the cloud providers have a secrets management solution. I am going to use the Docker Swarm one because it's pretty simple to show in the lab. The principles are pretty much exactly the same. Um, it's a fairly basic secrets manager, but it does what we need it to do. Unfortunately, I have to start the Docker Swarm um, server to run this, and I have to make a couple of changes to how we do this, but nothing too serious. So I've started a Docker Swarm instance. Um, just locally on this on this environment and then I'm going to create my secret so docker secret create there is my secret ID and then I can inspect the secret and you'll see I get information about it but obviously I don't see the content of the secret which is you know what we want so I could now delete that uh, that token um, and I you know it's it's not available on the, the host client system anymore Okay, let's take a quick look at the docket, the uh, secret before. It's exactly the same, only instead of there being a file, it just says external equals true, which means it's using an external secrets manager. Unfortunately, we um, the docker swarm command that we'll have to use to run this, the docker stack deploy command, will hide the console output. So we'll have to tail the logs to see what's going on inside there. But let's take a look at the application. It's actually almost exactly the same as the last one. The only difference really is I'm adding a while true loop in so that we can actually follow the logs in a slightly more sort of interactive manner and see it running through every five seconds it's going to make the request again. This isn't actually the perfect way to do it. I should reread the um, the value fairly frequently, but um, hey, this is just a demo. So once we've done that, we can just re we can deploy the container. So first I have to build it because I'm I'm using a, a, a Docker docker swarm command so I'm just going to build the container um, you know it, it does the same same things as we do if we do a standard compose and then I'm going to use the docker stack deploy with the compose file that we've uh, we've shown to to run that uh, and I have to give it a name of secret stack and then I, what I need to do is then find my container which we can again do with the docker ps command and then I'm just going to tail the logs for that particular container. You can see it there, it's secret stack API client. So I'm just going to copy and paste that uh, copy and paste that uh, command. So uh, then we do docker logs minus F, and then the container ID. If I could copy and paste correctly. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, and you can see that we're running over and over again with our 200 success and the API key, which is actually a value we extract from the JWT, and then we play back in a header um, using our Nginx uh, application server. 
Okay, so we can control C out of here. Um, obviously, what we could do now is just let's just check. Let's just make sure that we can't. We know that we're not going to see it as environment variable. Let's, we can do this exactly the same thing that we did before, just quickly, just to prove that we can't see this again. So again, we'll extract the um, we'll extract the export the file system um, into another file name API three dot tar. Um, we do that, and then again we will um, extract that particular file from. Um, obviously, I can't type, so it takes a little bit longer for me to do almost anything in these labs. Um, and then we'll just extract. Um, so we again, we'll just copy and paste it into. And again, obviously, we can't see that, so that's great. Um, so the thing is, it's still probably possible to extract that secret. If we've got the right permissions, um, if I've got the host gets hacked and I can like, get that image, run the container, um, maybe like dig around inside it, um, be on the CLI, get a get a shell on it, you know, that things can happen. We can definitely lose our, um, our system. So what I should do is I should rotate my secret fairly often. So what I'm doing here is just shutting down that service, deleting the secret, um, and then I'm gonna create a new secret um, Docker doesn't let you update these secrets, you have to just delete them and start again. I've created a new one from this token2 file here, you can see. And then I'm going to deploy the stack again. And I am going to then, again, take a look at this. I'm going to tell the log, and you'll see what we've done here by deleting the secret and then adding it in again with the same secret name but with a different value by using the token2. Um, you'll see that the only thing that's actually changed is it's still working, but we all see that we're using the API key too. So we just swapped tokens, we swapped a new token into our secret, we restarted our um, application, and now we're using a different API key. Uh, things like Kubernetes will allow you to dynamically um, dynamically change this, and which is another good reason why you should you know configure your apps to re to reread from that file system fairly often. Um, so that's how we can build a very secure way of adding secrets into our containers. Hopefully at the end of this lab, you'll find it really useful and you'll remember to press the finish button and we'll be done. Thanks a lot.